Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashika Rin on behalf of the Archer and Olive design team coming to you with the what, why and how of the bullet journal index. Before we get into it, just a reminder that this video does have a related blog post over on the Archer and Olive website. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to check out the link in the description to that post. While in this video, we've mainly got an overview of what the index is, how you set one up and why you might want to do that. There's even more details and tips over on that blog post, along with a free printable reference list of the tips discussed. Jumping in though, a question for you. Have you ever set up a page in the middle of your journal and then every time you went to look it up, you couldn't actually find it? This is what the index is for. It's a way to help make finding things in your journal easier. The index is one of the main parts of the original bullet journal method, with the others being the key, the future log, the monthly logs, and the daily logs. Despite being a core component, the extent to which the index is now used in our community is actually quite varied, and it really depends on how each individual likes to use and organize their journals. However, the index can still be a powerful tool that helps keep your organization system organized. <laughs> in defining what the index is, it's important to consider the difference between an index in a book versus the index in a bullet journal. A book's index is typically an alphabetized list of topics or subjects in the book, usually found at the back of the book, which tells you which pages feature that content. A bullet journal's index, on the other hand, is typically a chronological list of collections in the journal. We typically find it at the front of the journal, and it tells you which pages those collections are found on. Although they have the same function, the location and organization of these are different. A bullet journal index can kind of better be compared to the table of contents in a book, so listing the sections or collections in your journal from front to back. So that's the what, but how about the why? The general premise of the original bullet journal method is that any new entry or collection to your journal just goes on the next available space or page. This means that there may not be any real rhyme or reason to the ordering of the pages outside of them just being the next thing that you wanted to set up. This is where the index comes in. Its purpose is to make finding things easier. Rather than flipping through page after page in your journal, trying to find that one collection that you set up however long ago, you can instead refer to your index, which tells you which page number to head to. When you set up an index in your journal, this will typically happen at the start of your journal, but to put it simply, you open to the first page of your notebook, write the title index, and it's ready to go. As you put other collections into your journal, you can add them as subsequent entries to your index along with the page number they're found on. If you're using an Archer and Olive journal, these notebooks won't come with a pre-printed index, meaning you have the opportunity to make your own in a style that works for you. This could be as simple or as decorative as you want, but in its simplest version, an index is just a single column list with a title or description of the collection or journal section, along with the page number or page numbers it can be found on. To use an index, you do have to have numbered pages in your notebook. Some journals will come with these pre-printed, while in others, you can simply add them in using your pen of choice. Most people prefer to add the numbers to an outer corner of the pages. Although an index may just be a simple list of collections in your journal, this doesn't mean that there aren't ways to make it more functional or easier to use. One of the ways to make your index more user-friendly is first to consider what you're actually going to be indexing. Not every page in your journal needs to be added to the index, and it may actually be more helpful just to index pages of importance, rather than every single daily log, weekly log, or monthly tracker. Keeping it to just the important collections means that you don't have to search through a whole heap of index entries that you aren't really going to need to know the placement of in future. Another point to consider are collections in your journal which span multiple pages in particular those that aren't on subsequent pages. Rather than listing out every single page a collection spans as a separate index entry, what you can instead do is list the first page of that collection chronologically in your index, then write all of the page numbers that that collection spans next to that entry. This can be a lot more helpful than writing out all the pages as separate index entries, as it reduces bulk in your index and allows you to quickly see where all of the pages for that collection are located in your journal. 
just with one entry. If you're using the single column method for your index, especially if you're adding a lot of entries to your index, you may also find that your index starts to take up quite a few pages, with a decent amount of wasted space. To make better use of the space available, you can divide your index pages into two columns, effectively doubling the number of entries that you can make in your bullet journal index. A super full index can be a little bit overwhelming to look at, and make finding pages in your journal a time-consuming process if you have to read through all of those entries. Another tip to help make finding things in your index faster and easier is to code it either with color or signifiers. You can highlight important entries in your index with a colored marker, or put a symbol to the side of any entry that you know you'll likely want to refer back to in the future. For example, you can highlight any collections related to a specific topic or theme, or use a signifier to show entries for the start of a new month. Another tip for making your index easier to use is making a flip-out or detachable index. When it comes to referring to or populating your index, it can be kind of a pain having to flip back and forth between the index pages and whatever collections you're actually wanting to work on. Flip out indexes can help here in that you can see them from any page in your journal. To make one of these, you just need to write your index on a separate piece of paper and then attach it into the front cover of your journal along one side, such that it can be flipped out to the left to see your index entries. Detachable indexes are similarly done on a separate piece of paper but can either be stored in the back pocket of your notebook or washi taped into the front cover. If you have collections stored in previous notebooks, collections that you may still want to refer to or work on, then what can be useful to have is a master index. This is an index that allows you to easily find pages across multiple notebooks. In setting up a master index, you of course need the page numbers of the collections that you're indexing, but you also need a way to refer to which notebook they're in. This could be something like numbering your journals, so journals 1, 2, and 3. You could assign letters to each of your journals, so A, B, and C. Or you could name your journals. Then, in putting those entries into your master index, you just need to write down the number, letter, or name of the journal, along with the page number that the relevant collection is found on. If your journal contains a lot of separate collections on different themes or topics, what can also be useful is to section out your index into categories. A simple example would be collections related to work versus personal collections. But to categorize your index, all you need to do is divide up your index page or pages into separate sections, and then give each section a header for what types of collections will be indexed in that section. A related idea as we talked about previously, the index in a book is alphabetized rather than listed chronologically. If having your entries somewhat alphabetized would be helpful though, what you can do is break your index down into 27 sections. This leaves one space for each letter of the alphabet and one space for numbers. In each of those sections, you can then list your index entries so that you can easily find pages based on the first character of their title. While these tips are for people who are using an index in their journal, what if you're still on the fence about it? There are also ways to index, or help you easily find things in your journal, without actually using a formal index. Tips on that type of indexing are discussed in the related blog post for this video, which is linked in the description box below, and do make sure to check it out for more indexing ideas. Question of the day for you though, do you use an index in your journal? If so, what do you find to be most helpful about it? And if not, why do you choose not to? Hopefully these index ideas have been helpful, and if so, do make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. As always team, thank you for watching, and until next time, bye!